Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we check out Studio One version 5.4 and all the new features. At the recording of this video, Studio One version 5.4 released earlier this week. They've added a ton of new features and we're going to go over a number of the key ones today. So let's go ahead and dive into the DAW and take a look at some of these new added features. So one of the first ones that a lot of people have been asking for is native support for the Apple M1 chip. And with 5.4, that's now here. So if you've been rocking one of the M1 chips, you now have native support for that chip. If you were a little unstable before, they've addressed it now. So go ahead and upgrade and you should have a much more stable version of Studio One on your M1 chip. Up next is plugin napping. If you have a number of plugins on your session and maybe your CPU is running a little too sluggishly, plugin napping and enabling this allows plugins that are not currently passing audio to nap or temporarily deactivate to save that CPU power. To do that, come down to where it says performance underneath the graphs down here. Click on performance and you'll get the performance monitor. In here, it may not look exactly like this. You probably don't have show devices on. I usually do. But you'll see this new checkbox right here underneath dropout protection called enable plugin nap. So this will deactivate plugins on channels that are not passing audio. If you're doing your mix and you're playing back and maybe you have a stack of plugins on a track, but it's just for the bridge, it won't use the CPU for those plugins until the audio starts passing through them. And then it will activate them. You'll hear everything the way you mixed it to be. And then a little bit after you've stopped playback or you've passed the section where the audio is passing, the plugins will go back into their nap because you're not utilizing them anymore. And there's been some updates in the device page as well. You can see down here, I have a few plugins that are currently napping because I'm not playing anything. I'm just here talking to you guys. So this compressor and the somatics origin on the piano track that I have, they're currently napping. But if I hit play, they wake right up and get me right back to the sound that I've dialed in. Then after a few seconds, they go back to sleep. The moon is back and they're napping, so they're not using that CPU power. Also to follow this up, the mix effects engine has also gotten an optimization update and a very similar kind of thing. If you have a mix effects on a bus, let's say, and that bus is no longer passing audio, then it too will stop using CPU power to create the MixFX engine and save some CPU for your machine. But once you start passing audio, there you go. It'll kick back on and get you the sound you've dialed in. Up next, this is really big. When you're done with your production and you're done with your mix, you come up to song and you would normally just go ahead and export your mix down. But now the window looks different because we have multi-format exports in one pass, and that's huge. You can very quickly and easily now export your wave, or maybe you do AIFF, maybe you do a FLAC file, whatever you do, or you can do all of these. You can go in and activate every different format, and in one pass of the export, it will create whatever you have checked with the parameters you've set, and it'll put them all in the same destination folder. So now you very quickly and easily can export your high quality wave file, your lossless files, and your MP3 that you can give to the artist so they can listen on their way home from your studio or send it to the rest of the band members who may not have been there for the mix, or maybe they want to send it to their girlfriend, their wives, their mom, their dad, their uncle, their cousin, you get it. So now you can export multiple formats in one pass. Really great feature. Next, let's talk about the chord display. I'm gonna close these two windows out, and then I'm gonna go up to view and come down here to chord display. This will bring up a large window that you can see pretty easily with a couple different display options. The chord track will follow the chord track. So if you've scanned your audio, trying to find out what guitar chords the guitar player played, and you drag that up to the chord track, you can then see the chords that he played, and it's a nice large display. 
Next is input chord. If you have a MIDI keyboard and you just jam a bunch of keys, find out what chord you're playing. But the way I have it, and probably the way I would use it the most, me personally, is on the editor. So right now, I'm looking at the edit window back here, and wherever my cursor is hovering over, wherever the playhead is, it's going to show me that chord. And I just kind of randomize the notes that I have in this MIDI pass here. So I can very quickly and easily find out what chords I actually put in. Maybe I wanna to navigate to the first bar. Oh, that's a C6. Somewhere in the second bar? Ah, D minor add nine 11. D minor add 11, the, the nine's implied. Then we also have the two chords at the end, D sharp, sus four, add nine. That's a mouthful. And then just the D, cause I just put it down half a step. But now I have this nice large display. I can see what these chords are. Up next is the plugin manager. We're gonna go back up to view and go to plugin manager. And you'll see that this has a little bit of an update as well. There's a few more columns available showing us some more statistics, including the version number. So you can double check the versions you have installed with the manufacturer to see if you've got the latest version of the plugin. Maybe sometimes you're having some issues with the plugin. Double check here if the version you have installed actually matches what they have or get the update if it's available to you. Also, there's a new tab here, statistics, telling you statistics of the plugins you have available. It'll average your load time, your save time, how big your presets are, It'll give you a number of statistics so you can learn why does this session load so fast and this one loads so slow. Mm, you know what it is? It's this plugin here is using a bunch of processing to load. That's why it takes so long. Plus, when you have a whole bunch of plugins, it adds up. This will give you some statistics on those plugins. And last but not least is probably one of my favorites. Something we've seen in the inserts section is if you go to the drop down arrow next to inserts, you have the option all the way down here on bottom to remove all. This is great. Maybe I hate the chain that I've created on this piano and I want to start fresh. On my plugins, this has always been there. But Maybe my plugins are perfect and I just have all of these sends to different effects. I have six different reverbs and four different delays and all this other stuff. And I just made all of these sends. In the past, you would have to go to each individual send, hit the down arrow and remove. You don't need to do that anymore. All you need to do, just like your inserts, is go to sends and the down arrow. Now you have the option to remove all. This is very handy and it's great because just like I was saying, sometimes I try out a bunch of different effects that I may have loaded in. And then I would have to go in and remove all of my sends, even if they're not active and sending to the channels I was auditioning. Now I can just remove all and maybe add the one back in or drag and drop from another channel and adjust my levels from there. This is very handy. And now I can get rid of all of those sends. That's just a few of the great features that they've added into Studio One version 5.4. And a lot of these were taken from user feature requests that they get on the forums. If you didn't see your update or you have a request for something, maybe you wanna take something from here and bring it to the project page, go to the feature requests and add it in there and also search to see if somebody else has asked for it too and upvote theirs instead of having multiple of the same feature request. As long as you're upvoting one and you're saying, you know what, this is something that we should really have. The developers look at that and they implement these things into the updates and they might get yours in the next update. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. For more, visit timflansbaum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.